Hey everybody, this is JJ, and this is going to be a uh, real quick lesson on how to read contour lines. And unfortunately, I haven't figured out a great way to to do this and uh, to show you graphic representations so that it makes it easy to understand. So what I've gone to is just basically taken some uh, images from some old survival manuals. So that is going to be what we're going to take a look at here first. Okay, so essentially contour lines uh, basically measure the distance from sea level. They measure elevation, but their shape also gives you an indication of what kind of terrain feature you're looking at. Now there are three different kinds of contour lines. You have the index contour line, which as you see in this picture here has the elevation marked on it. Then you have what is the most common that you'll see the most of is the intermediate contour lines and those are not labeled and then you'll have the dotted supplementary lines. Now supplementary lines are generally only used um, when you have kind of a flat elevation. Okay so contour lines as you can see in this picture here are basically uh, what is enables you to determine elevation. Um, when you're looking at a 3D object like the hills on the top, you can uh, see how you can look how you can read that in a 2D form down at the bottom. So contour lines are basically uh, just like it looks in a the picture, they're basically uh, big for lack of a better word circles you know that, that follow the same elevation around a contour feature. And no matter how weird shaped a mountain is or whatever, a contour line is always going to close back into itself um, because it follows that same line of elevation. And you can determine what uh, terrain feature you're looking at based on the shape of those contour features. And so we'll go ahead and get started with the most basic of those, which is the peak. Okay, this is a representation of a peak. You've got a side view on the top, and then you have what it might look like on a map uh, down at the bottom. And if you notice where the little on the bottom where that little triangle is, that is the center of the peak. Now, uh, what denotes the actual peak is the smallest enclosed circle uh, on that on that picture that does not have any other uh, contour lines inside of it. And that will that, that smallest circle is what's going to tell you that's the very top of the peak. Um, the the triangle doesn't necessarily uh, it's not on all uh, peaks, so don't use that as a reference. It's basically just the small enclosed circle, and that's going to let you know that's the very top of that uh, of that terrain feature. Okay, so here's another look at a uh, peak, just a basic hill. And uh, the picture on the right is, is what it would look like from the ground, and then the picture on the left is what you would see on the map, and just how the contour lines would you know, be shaped and that kind of thing. And the very inner circle is the top of that peak. Again, it's a small enclosed circle with no other contour lines inside of it. That is the top of the hill. Okay, so the distance uh, between contour lines also gives you some indication of what kind of terrain you're looking at. So if you look at the picture on the left, you see that the contour lines down below the picture are spread a little bit further apart, and that indicates a more gentle slope you know, going down. If you look at the picture on the right, you'll see that the contour lines are much closer together, and then that's, that hill is much steeper. And that is also true for whenever you're looking at topographical maps. Anywhere that you see them contour lines coming very close together, that's going to tell you that you are seeing an elevation change much quicker. And so it's going to be either you know very steep. Okay, so here's another look at uh, just a basic peak. And as you can see on the left side, the contour lines are closer. And on the right side, it, they're farther apart. And the reason you want to be able to know this when you're reading a map is because when you're picking your route, you need to be able to identify where the easy terrain is to walk on and where the really steep and nasty terrain is. So that's why we go over uh, looking at this. Okay, so this is just basically a representation of, you know, showing you what a couple of different peaks might look like with uh, some limited contour lines there. As you can see where the arrow is pointing, that's the top of the peak. It's got the road running through there, and then you've got a couple of other peaks behind it. So essentially that's just kind of putting it together for you to see what they might look like with a couple of other things around it. 
so now we should go ahead and move on to another terrain feature. Okay, so this is a saddle in the picture on the right. You see the low area between the two high peaks is a saddle. Um, and as you can see on the map, it, it's basically just you know that, that low area between the two. Uh, the reason it's important is it's an easily identifiable feature for triangulation, which we'll get into later on, and it's also a way to save you from having to cross the very highest part of the peak. Okay, so I said earlier that the shape of the contour line will help you to understand what sort of terrain feature it is. Now, uh, the next thing we need to look at is how to identify a ridge or a spur. And the way you do that is when you see, if you notice in this picture where the two arrows are pointing, that is a ridge or a spur. And you can identify these on a on contour lines because the contour line starts to U or V, kind of make a U or a V shape, that where the bottom of the V or the U is pointing away from the peak. And when you see that happening, that is that contour line going around the outside of that ridge and the reason that is useful is because ridgelines are usually easier to travel on um, and they also you know if you were trying to hide or whatever and you wanted to stay down low or something along those lines then you'd know to stay more towards the drainages um, and or the valleys and we'll kind of cover those here in just a second okay so here's another look at how a ridgeline or a spur uh, may look on a map and if you see the A there and you see the contour line closest to the arrow down below the A, you can see that's kind of a sharp V where it's the, the V portion of the contour line would, would be pointed away from the peak. And then on B, you've got a, a spur there coming off to the side. And there's really no not a lot of difference between spurs and, and ridges. You don't need to get too mixed up on that. but um, it's just going to be more of a gradual kind of a U-shape that is pointing away from the peak over there. So that's just kind of a, a good look at uh, you know what they might look like in, in more of a, a realistic picture for you. Okay, now a drainage or a draw is exactly opposite of a ridge line or a spur. And it's exactly opposite in the contour lines also where a ridge line V's away from the peak, the uh, drainage and the draw, basically the point of the V points towards the peak as it does in the picture up here on the left. Um, you got the peak up at about the one o'clock position and then you can see the kind of weird shaped little V points up towards that uh, peak. And then the picture on the right just kind of shows you what a drainage or a draw might look like. Okay, so on this picture, imagine that you have your peak up there at the top of the page, and then you can see those sharp V's pointing up towards the peak. And then on the picture on the right, you can see how the drainages are kind of cut into the hillside there. Okay, so here we have a depression on the left, and a depression looks essentially the same as a peak, except for it has little tick marks that go to the inside of it. And, you know, that might be in like, like the picture above is like a volcano. It also could be a sinkhole or just a low area um, that's lower than the ground surrounding it. And then on the right, you have a cliff. And these are kind of important to know uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and basically what that is is where the contour lines come so closely together that you really can't distinguish them from one another. And then you've got tick marks off to the one side there. Um, so those are you know both good things to know uh, particularly the the cliff and what that looks like okay here's just another way that you might see a cliff depicted and that's where the contour lines all come together and then just wanting to run into one single line okay so if we put this all together on a kind of a small map here starting at the top you can see the peak that's uh, up by the number one up there then if you look to the far left over at the 9 o'clock position, you can see the number 2, which is a kind of a valley, which all kind of leads into number 6, which is a, um, a draw or a drainage. And then coming across uh, the page to the right, you see the number 3, which is an example of a ridge line. Uh, then you got another 6 there, which is another drainage, and a 7, which is a uh, spur or another ridge line. And then it kind of alternates back and forth between the sixes and seven and that's just you know a draw and then a, a 
a ridge line, a draw on a ridge line. And then if you look over further to the right, you'll see uh, the number five over there, which was a uh, drainage, or excuse me, a depression. And that's that small circle with the tick marks to the inside. And um, those are really the most important features uh, of a topographical map that you need to be worried about for your basic land navigation. Okay, so if we put this all together and we look at a real topographical map, you should be able to start to pick out some terrain features uh, based on the stuff that we just went over. And as you can see right there uh, by the mount, the word mount on the picture you got above you, that is a peak and then off to the left is a very steep hill uh, going down it. And then going over towards the numbers 283 at the top of the page, you can see a ridge line going down there. Um, and, you know, the only way to really get good at this is to spend time looking at your topographical map. And uh, what I find is it's kind of like looking at those old 3D pictures that, you know, when you first look at them, you can't really see anything. But if you keep staring at it long enough, then the picture starts to kind of reveal itself. And that is what happens with topographical map when you spend time looking at it and, and studying the terrain and that kind of thing. So that's what I suggest you do. Uh, I suggest that if you have a bug out location or a hunting location or something along those lines or just an area that you like to hike or whatever the case may be, you know, get a topographical map, spend some time sitting there looking at it and it will actually kind of come to life and you'll be able to see the features around you. Um, you know, now that you know what they do and, and uh, what the basic shapes are and what the basic, you know, terrain features are. So, anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, really appreciate it when you uh, share the videos with your friends if you think it's useful. And, you know, if you, if you like it, hit the thumbs up button. And if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I always do the best I can to try to answer the questions. And uh, I will see you on the next video here shortly. Stay safe, guys.